We're at the Milton Gallery on the University of Central Oklahoma campus, and I thought we'd do something different today. Uh, we spend our time mostly talking about how to make paintings, but I thought for a change we'd look at finished paintings, namely mine. So, um, I thought you might like to see how some of those paintings you've seen in progress came out, and also how some of these look like when you put them in scale. Uh, these monumental ones I find don't quite come across in reproduction. But we also have our Nihilistalgia series of most recent paintings all hung and framed up. Uh, and we can look at some moldies but goodies. But let's start from the beginning. The name of the show is Mindscape. I call it subjective realism. It's more about the processing of reality than it is about reality itself. Now let's start with this guy here, which is a stereogram self-portrait. If you can cross your eyes to merge the two figures into one figure in the middle, it'll be 3D. And if you can't cross your eyes, I made this little viewfinder that'll do it for you. Science. <laughs> and I had to make these little non-literate instructions. It's pretty straightforward what you gotta do. And small portraits. Um, I always fall back on portraiture when I don't know what to paint next. Uh, there we have the Walmart series. I call it the Human Resources series. And they're actually based off of classic worker genre paintings like Courbet's Stonebreakers. And Diego Rivera's The Exploiters. And pretty classic image of Malay's Gleaners. But without further ado, a series of paintings I like to call Nihilistalgia. Why, what on earth does that mean, Steve? You might be asking. Well, it's a combination of the words nostalgia and nihilism. This one here is entitled Self-Portrait Impasse. And it's an allegory for being completely lost inside yourself, completely lost in your own head. It's broken up into three parts, and that is symbolic of the heart down below, represented by a fading ember with uh, feet prints obsessively pacing around it. Uh, in the center you have the dark forest of the soul, and up in the sky the branches form this maze uh, with no object to it. It's basically an answerless riddle. And this one looks familiar, doesn't it? Well, it's finished. And, I don't know, I really like those grackles. They're, uh, scrappy little scavengers. You can usually find them, especially in the Walmart parking lot. Um, so shoot me in the face. I like scavengers. Probably knew that about me if you've ever seen me play Fallout. Ooh, and this one. This one's entitled Compass. It's, uh... Uh, like a moral compass, <laughs> like a spiritual guide, sort of akin to, I don't know, Two-Face flipping a coin, right? Yeah. And that was the portrait that got me into painting after a couple of years of neglect on the subject. But look at that texture. That's a crunchy painting. Like that. Yeah, buddy. I like that crunchy paint. 
Yeah, maybe you've seen this one before. Unfiltered, what does that mean? Well, if you ever read uh, a whiskey bottle, it might say something to the effect of charcoal filtered or triple filtered. Um, so what about unfiltered? Uh, that's a reference to um, losing social filters and uh, basically letting your inner demons spill out like a basket of snakes that got kicked over. The whole thing's intended to look like a Jack Daniels bottle label. Uh, so hence the text and the slithering line work, uh, visually alluding back to the snakes. And I've always been worried that people might think that it's a mistake, though it was completely intentional, that the figure has two left hands, akin to two left feet, I suppose, but people don't seem to notice. Now this series of square paintings, I call them song paintings because they're all based off of songs I've written. In some cases, they could be based off of a single line, and others are trying to actually capture the aesthetics of the song and the visual aesthetics of the painting. Let's have a listen. Here's a little knick-knack. Uh, that was just basically a painting demo that turned out really well. It's encaustic paint, which is wax-based paint. Um, and it's another scavenger, a little stray mutt. This work here, it is analyzing humanity as a species. Um, this one here is called Horde, and the ant tunnel, ant farm texture in the background is supposed to contrast with the grid-like pattern of the cityscape, or the satellite view of the city. The message here is that humanity has built this huge communal existence for itself, but biologically we're not quite there yet. We're still trying to stake our own claim. It's about civilization outpacing evolution, basically. And this is titled Parliament. It's a triptych, which is typically associated with, you know, maybe religious paintings. There's a trinity of violence going on here. And the message is that humanity is a pretty awful animal, right? But we are remarkable in that we have the choice to side with our sapient side. Though if, if we deny the very existence of that animal nature, 
We can actually open the door for it to manifest itself in our behavior. Well, thank you for coming on a gallery trip with me and bearing through my little show and tell. Um, and perhaps next time we'll actually be doing some painting, but I'll see you next time on, you know. Sorry about the mess, but let's paint.